when I learned to sew, the serger was non-existent, and finishing those seams was the part I really disliked, especially when I would struggle with pinking shears. Now I can just move to my serger, bind those seams, and keep going. What a joy to own a serger. The serger has become important in finishing seams, but also in other ways. I hope you will be inspired by the new serger techniques to create a baby bonnet. Let's get going. We have fun things to learn today. Welcome to my sewing room. I love baby bonnets, and I especially love this baby bonnet made of handkerchief linen, blue and white. The brim of the bonnet is so sweet and it's attached to the base of the bonnet with a wonderful bridging, a Victorian bridging. Oh, don't you love the little rabbits embroidered on with little patches of grass and little leaves? Then for the uh, casing in the bonnet, by the way, this is totally made on a serger, except for the machine embroidery. For the casing of the bonnet, it's a real interesting serger technique. Now let's just see exactly how these were attached. To attach the brim of the bonnet to the bridging, you simply put the bridging here and serge along the edges and then press it out. It makes such a beautiful finish. Now to make the casing in the back, we're going to have a piece of fabric, not biased, but straight, fold it in half, um, Put the raw edges down and do the serger stitch. Now watch, serge it and then it looks like so. Then to make that beautiful little casing, remember this is the folded part for the casing, I open it up and that pretty decorative serger stitching shows. I'm so glad to have as my guest today, Jody Hooker. Jody is an educator with Husqvarna Viking. And Jody, I'm so glad to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I really love to make um, things with my serger, but I also like to use my embroidery machine. So let's start on the bonnet. About 15 inches you'll want for your fabric length and choose the width that you would use for the size of your hoop. And then just mark the placement of where you wanna put your embroidery designs. Some stabilizers that I use, this is a, a mesh that has an iron-on side to it that you can iron onto the back of the linen and then just a light tearaway stabilizer to, for um, behind your stitches. Now for the bonnet brim, what we're gonna do is that we're going to cut about a 15 by about four inch in width on the bonnet brim, fold it in half. Then we're gonna make a little V. We'll measure, we're going to measure the center of our bonnet, go about a quarter of an inch, and then from the center, mark an eighth of an inch on both sides, and straight stitch with your sewing machine into a V-shape. Then you're going to take your scissors, and you're going to snip right down the center of that V-shape. Okay. We're going to turn this inside out, and that's what's going to form part of our V. Okay. Now to attach bridging to fabric, we're gonna place it right sides together and we're gonna use our serger. Because it's linen, I use a three thread narrow, um, narrow edge instead of a rolled edge. And I'm gonna place this under the foot so that the latter side of the bridging is gonna straddle those two lines in the foot. And then we're gonna serge. Making a beautiful, quick and easy finish. That's right. Now, of course, we wouldn't do this with blue thread, but just so you can see what the stitching looks like, take this out, and look how quick and finished. Yeah, yeah. Completes okay. the seam. Then we're going to attach a piece of batiste just behind the linen, just to give it a little bit of a shadow and hide the embroidery stitches, and put a little bit of a lining piece, just a strip, a bias strip just in the top to add a little accent. And those now we're going to- do little bunnies. I love oh, those bunnies. So cute, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to make the brim. Okay. And for the brim, we've got one and a half inch strip. We have folded together and pressed nice. And then we're going to serge these two pieces together. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to have the pretty side of the fabric showing towards you. 
so that the stitching will, will be our, um, our accent. So we have um, embroidery thread in the top and the upper looper of our serger. And our rises are together. We're going to serge. We're going to press that towards the back of the bonnet. And then we'll attach all three pieces together. And you've got that pretty little casing. Yes. I'm going to turn this back around so we can see that casing that you just made that you run the ribbon through that pretty little decorative stitch. And the rest of this is just absolutely adorable. I especially love those little rabbits. But I love <laughs> the fact that you made it on the serge. It was, so, it was so fast and easy. It's fast, it's easy, it's clean. <laughs> Cuts and serges at the same time. See, I really like yeah. that. And now Jody has brought some sewing inspiration for you. This little convertible or baby romper, which really it can be either a nightgown or a romper, is so darling, Jody. You put those sweet little rabbits with the little butterflies, or a rabbit with the little butterflies, and these little booties are so cute. I love the way you use that little rabbit embroidery, and they really do match the little bonnet. And this was all ready to embroider. Now these you made, okay? And I see a lot yeah. of serger stitching. Were these totally on the serger? On the serger, except for the embroidery. All right, I love it. Oh, some more cute little boy things, Jody. This is adorable, and you've used little. Um, uh, airplane buttons and embroidered little airplane it says on the move there and I'll tell you what little boys little baby boys are certainly on the move they move <laughs> as fast as grease lightning as everybody who's watching this can attest to Jody I just love this little outfit the little uh, the baby top and the baby diaper cover and the booties and I know this was all done on the serger too and we use flannel for the fabric oh flannel oh my mm -hmm. goodness and yeah. this oh I love that and the little bonnet with the bridging made very similar to the little bonnet sort that we just saw yes. and of course what baby outfit is not perfect and more perfect when you have a beautiful quilt Jody now this whole thing is flannel now this will be your uh, broadcloth and the beautiful Victorian yes. embroideries and the machine embroidered stars which yeah. you picked up out of the flannel oh this is your nice soft blankie <laughs> most of that done was it all except for the machine embroidery was it all, all done, done in the serger? serger and you know Jody I love this the little uh, romper and a little cow that's embroidered <laughs> how adorable and the little matching cow fabric this is so cute I know that you and your husband live on a farm so I imagine you like little cows on things that's and right. I do too I might add and now Jody has a so quick and so easy project to share with you Jody, I just love those little jewelry pouches you're going to share with our viewers. Thank you, Martha. I found that when I travel that my jewelry gets tangled up, so I started making individual little pouches for them. And how to make them with the serger is really quite simple. First, I start out taking an embroidery insertion. This particular serger has, this particular um, embroidery insertion has several little holes in it. And then to add color to it, I just use some sheer organza. Then I'm going to stitch my, embroid my bridging to my embroidery insertion with the sheer. Now to help hold that down, you might want to use some spray adhesive so it doesn't slide while you're serging. And we're going to place some sheer linen fabric right on both sides of this so that you will have linen connected to your, your bridging. And then we're going to start with our pin tucks. Now I call these shadow pin tucks, and how we make these is that we're going to use a rayon thread or an embroidery thread in our upper looper. We're going to take our stitch length of our, of our rolled edge, and we're going to make it a little bit shorter so that it's going to be closer together, about a 0, 8. So our stitches will be close together to make um, the, the thread show up more. Now I'm going to put right sides together, and I'm going to measure about 3 quarters of an inch, and I'm going to serge 
using the side of my foot along this previous stitch. As a guide. As a guide. You can see that the stitches are very close together. It's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. And you know, using a bright colored thread will really enhance the pin tuck. Okay, that would be our first one. We'll open it up and then we're going to serge another tuck. Again, right sides together. And the wonderful thing about a serger is that whatever the serger doesn't need, it'll cut that extra fabric off. So all I'm doing is I'm watching pretty this. Pretty smart. Huh? Pretty smart thing. <laughs> so I am just guiding my foot along the other side of that serger pin tuck. Then you're going to press those pin tucks so that they're towards that bridging. So then the most of that color will show. Oh, that is a shadow pin tuck. That is oh, a right. shadow pin tuck. Run some ribbon through. I like using my little bodkin right here and I just run the ribbon through. And then we'll join some pretty edging to a piece of bridging. For the top trim. For the top trim. And then just sew it together. Sew it together. <laughs> And you'll put your right sides together. And just sew it up. Yep, sew the side of the bag up and then sew the bottom and you have your little pouch. And I bet you run a little ribbon through the top so you can pull that bag up. Run a little ribbon through the up. top to tie it together. <laughs> Jody, that's such a cute project. Thank you. Thank you so much. And next I have some machine embroidery for you. I'd like to welcome Lindy Goodall. Lindy is Vice President of Creative Designs for Cactus Punch. Lindy, thanks for coming to the show today. Well, thank you, Martha, for inviting me. It's always great to be here. Thank you. What are you going to share with us today? Well, you know, we're getting more and more creative with our embroidery designs, and some collections now come with extra printable things that you can put on your uh, paper or fabric. And here's some samples right here. This one's been printed on vellum and this one's been printed on fabric. So basically, anything you can run through your printer, you can print these printables on, and they coordinate with the embroidery designs. Now the printables come with the machine embroidery, is that correct? Yes, they're on oh, the CD. Oh, exciting. And you okay. can use them any way you want. Okay. So here we've used them to print a little party placemat for a young diva. And this would make a great teenager or young girl party. And we've got some embroideries, coordinating embroideries on here. And I want to show you the special thing with the napkin ring. This is a party favor, and it's a hair scrunchie. So they can take it with them afterwards and put it in their hair how or wear it on their wrist. Cute. So let's see how to make this little dress part here because it's a little different. And I already have one in the embroidery machine that's already embroidered. And there were some tricks on this. One is that we need to make this fringy here. And the other is we need to cut it out. So um, I like to do the cutting part first. And I do that with a soldering iron. And it's really magical. I like to do it while it's still in the hoop. And you're just going to guide the soldering iron real quickly around the edge. And you can just see how with the nylon organza, it just melts it right away. And so you'll just go all the way around it and then when it comes out of the hoop, it will look like this. Little tiny thing. Little thread. tiny thing. Uh -huh. And don't want to knock that starting iron on the floor. Also, I have already trimmed the fringe from the back. And all you're doing is trimming the bobbin thread. So if you cut the bobbin thread, you can then just lift up the loops How with cute. your scissors and have this little fringe. So the next step is to make your skirt. And we'll just take a couple layers of organza. You can see that I've used a scalloped edge rotary cutter to cut along the edge. I'm just going to run a gathering stitch along the edge there. We'll scrunch it up and we'll hot glue it onto the back of our skirt. Now some other options we have here, instead of making it into a scrunchie, we could make it into a pin by hot gluing a pin on the back. Or we could take a pipe cleaner, or not pipe cleaner, a paper clip, and bend a little coat hanger. Bend a little coat hanger yes. out of a paper clip. Yes. So if I can get my paper clip unstuck here, 
you can see that it comes right out of the paper clip. So you're just going to lift up one edge, one edge, and bend it over. How and you have a little cute. hanger. That would be so much fun for a party favor, you know, for even little six-year-olds. Those first graders oh, sure. love cute, fun things all and the way up to the teenager. And you can put the little crystals on there. I mean, oh, you can have diamonds. lots of fun. Yes, the diamonds. <laughs> the gluable diamonds. Mm -hmm. Well, Lindy, that is an adorable project, and I really like the fact that you can print fabric off of some of the uh, CDs now, mm -hmm. off of some of the embroidery CDs. So it coordinates with your embroidery. You, you can make garments out of it. You can do anything you want. Well, one thing for sure, we're having so much fun with our embroidery machines. We sure are. And God learned some about the computer now, but not a whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> Lindy, thank you so very much. And next, I have a quilting segment for you. This quilt is absolutely beautiful. It's an heirloom sewing dream because it has so many different techniques in it. The section that we're going to talk about today is this one right here. You can see we have the scalloped edges with the miters, making these pretty little points, sort of an oval shape with a few more little fancy turns and curves. But I would like for you to look at these techniques right here. What is this in the middle of this particular shape? This is called beginning French sewing by machine. We have insertion, uh, Victorian insertion, embroidered insertion, lace, entredot, more embroidered insertion, lace, uh, entredot. Let's just see exactly what is in that section. Now I know some of you may be new to heirloom sewing, so I'm gonna give you a little very brief overview on the pieces that we use for heirloom sewing. In other words, the ingredients for our recipe. Right here is a piece of French lace. Now this is ecru French lace. It is 100% cotton lace. And the strings, so to speak, that run along each side are called the headers of the lace. There is also a gathering thread. These headers, once you uh, put, your, put something underneath there and pick one up, those headers also act as a gathering thread. It's automatically built in in the French laces that come from France. This is embroidered insertion. It's embroidered by machine, and it's absolutely beautiful, and this one happens to be a lily of the valley pattern. This funny looking little piece is called entredeau. It is pronounced entredeur, entredeau, entredeau, entreduc. I happen to call it entredeau, and if you will look carefully, it looks a little bit like a railroad track for ants. It means between the two, and it's, it comes from Switzerland. It's been made many, many years, and the good thing is today's modern sewing machines actually stitch a stitch that looks like this. It's called wing needle entredeau. Anyway, those are sort of the ingredients. Well, not sort of, those are some of the ingredients. Now let's see, these are attached. So the embroidered insertion is attached to the lace. I want to share with you that technique. The lace is attached to the entredeau. I'm going to share with you those techniques. Once again, lace on the other side to the entredeau, lace to the embroidered insertion, and lace to the embroidered insertion. There are several definite ways of doing this, and they're so easy. And I just wanted to share with you how easy it is. These are beginning heirloom sewing techniques, or French sewing by machine, as we also call it. Now then, when you're going to attach lace to entredeau, you have two, a finished edge on the lace. So I trimmed away the seam allowance of the entredeau on this side. You see, I trimmed it away. And to attach it, I'm going to simply come in butt them together and zigzag. And you might say, well, Martha, are you supposed to let the uh, swing of the needle go into one hole and off the hole? Well, that's a good idea. And if you're doing it by hand, you would. But by machine, you won't hit it exactly, so don't worry about it. You just butt them together and zigzag going into the holes, not necessarily one hole at a time, and often catching, often catch the header of the lace. All right, that is entredeau to French lace insertion. Now over here, I have the insertion to the embroidered insertion, the French lace insertion to the Swiss embroidered insertion or Victorian insertion. There's a little trick here that I call Martha's Magic. And I don't know how well you can see this, so I'm just gonna tell you about it. I move the lace over, leaving about an eighth or a quarter, really about an eighth of an inch of fabric exposed. In other words, the lace is not butted up to the edge of the fabric. It is in about an eighth of an inch. Then I set the machine on zigzag, where, and very short. Uh, this one's set on a four width and a 0.5 length. Okay, 
I'm going to go into the heading of the lace and the needle goes all the way off the edge. All the, and it's called Martha's Magic. All right, now look, I'm going to sew it for you. This is a very short stitch, almost like a, um, very, well, just like a very short zigzag stitch. Can you? I don't know whether you can see it or not, but anyway, I've left a part of the fabric exposed like a satin stitch. It's going over the head of the header of the lace all the way off the edge of the fabric. And you know what happens when that when that stitches go along like this? It rolls and whips that raw edge into the edge of the lace. It rolls it and whips it. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am really going off the edge of the fabric. Now, why did I not just butt this lace up to the edge and just zigzag it to the edge? It is very simple. If I had just butted that lace up to the edge and zigzagged it with the lace to the raw edge of the fabric, it will come apart. So therefore, many years ago, when I wrote the first book, I had to invent a way of rolling that fabric into the lace where it would be very tight and very secure. And we've always called that Martha's Magic. That's the easy way of attaching lace to fabric, whether it's embroidered insertion or whether it's just plain fabric, like the lace on the edge of a little bonnet. That's the way you attach lace insertion to fabric. And now won't you join me while I share with you a piece of clothing from my vintage collection. This is one of the most beautiful pieces in my collection. Let's just start at the neckline. This wonderful high Victorian collar with the beautiful French laces. I especially love the way the um, yoke is done kind of in spokes. Do you see how the lace makes spokes here? And these wonderful uh, rounded pin tucks. Look at the embroidery, completely magnificent hand embroidery. You know, I, I really don't want to get down to the bottom of the blouse without sharing with you this sleeve which is made like a leaf. It is so pretty. It has the scallops and gathered lace behind it. Now, as we travel on around, you can see that leaf pattern basically looks like a leaf right in the middle again with the scallops and then the gathered lace. And then there's some release tucks and wonderful shapes uh, with miters and curves all the way down the front. The sleeve is especially pretty too. It has those beautiful release tucks some curved lace, diagonal tucks um, on the sleeve. Absolutely just incredible, incredible details. The back of this blouse is really beautiful also. It has more of the beautiful embroidery, the tiny little buttons coming down the back. I surely would not like to have had to have buttoned my own blouse uh, if I wore this blouse a long time ago, which I didn't. I couldn't get in this blouse. But anyway, look at the different lace shapes. It is absolutely fabulous. For my Sewing from the Heart today, I have a letter from Chris Johnson, Secretary of the Four Rivers Quilt Guild. Dear Martha, the Four Rivers Quilt Guild of Tomahawk, Wisconsin consists of 16 members. We sew a number of projects for our community. We make breast cancer bags and pillows, hospice bags, and bunnies for juvenile cancer patients or children of cancer patients, walker bags for the local hospital therapy patients, and two local nursing homes, quilt of valor, quilts of valor for a wounded soldier, and Salvation Army quilts. In the past, we have made lap quilts for nursing homes, hats and mittens for needy children, capelets for nursing home patients, and we've also donated to the food pantry and the Red Cross. Chris Johnson, secretary. Chris, it just sounds like you ladies in Tomahawk, Wisconsin are really, really taking care of those in need. And I thank you for all of your sewing and all of our audience thanks you. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. Won't you come back next time? <laughs>